It's 10 days before Christmas and here I am in the low library at church in front of a fireplace. I've put on my red sweater. It's time to have a fireside chat about the year that has been and the year that is to come. I'm grateful to you all for having participated as, as you have over this past year. It's been challenging to be at a church in 2020. We started the year in a great fashion. We, we had a year end in 2019 that was very positive, the year end ask in terms of closing the final gap was wonderful. You responded generously, as I hope you will this year. We had a really strong pledge program last year. We were moving into 2020 with a, a budget that had grown and we were going to expand our ministry. Oh, it was going to be a wonderful year at Westminster. It has been, but not quite as we expected. When March hit, we, of course, began to discover what it would be like to be a church in the time of COVID. The session gathered in an emergency meeting and we decided that we would uh, suspend in-person worship for at least two weeks. Thought we were really stretching it there. And now, nine months later, uh, we're still not meeting in person. We really didn't know what we were getting into, but we knew that while we were apart, we were covenanting still to be the church. And we've kept to that this whole year. The very next week after that session meeting, the bells were installed at Westminster and some of you were able to come down and see the bells as they were displayed outside the church and some were able to watch them being installed. They have been ringing every day since then, reminding the city of Westminster's telling presence. As we moved into worship for those two weeks and then for the weeks to come, we began to learn quite a bit about how to do online worship and we used our new facility, Westminster Hall, the technology and our wonderful tech team there to deliver what we think is pretty good content that's just gotten better through the year. Uh, we've also shifted into uh, educational programming online for a while. We suspended it, then we thought, you know, let's continue to deliver our classes online. And, and then we figured out, you know, what's summertime, let's have day camp online, called it stay camp. And what about the mission trips? Well, let's do virtual mission trips with our high school youth. We did that in the summer. and We continued adult education through the summer. That we'd never done that before because participation was, was so strong in educational ministries and in our worship too. We grew attendance by two and three times. By the time we got toward the fall, we realized that we were going to have probably the whole next program year uh, in the time of COVID. So our staff gathered on a retreat by Zoom and and together with our lay leaders, planned for a year of church uh, through the time of COVID, a year of church online. Sunday school became a Wednesday evening Zoom experience for teachers and parents and kids. And, and we gathered it coming together in a new way. We came to church briefly in a kind of a staged outdoor brief uh, format where we people drove through, saw the ministers, had a quick picture, and then kept going all with our masks on. The other thing that we've done this year is we have redoubled our commitment to mission. When we reduced our budget in 2020, we reduced every area except our mission, air, mission support budget. That stayed the same as its pre-COVID levels. And then we added a couple of uh, emergency funds, the COVID fund, the interfaith relief fund, and those were given to generously by you all. Thank you for your support. That has allowed us to respond in a much more agile way, I would say, to emerging needs, especially following the killing of George Floyd when it was so clear that we needed to rethink our, our church's effort in partnership with others in this city to really uh, change the racial injustice of our nation as we could here locally. So we've given to um, efforts that black, indigenous, and immigrant communities are engaged in right on the ground because of these special mission funds. So it's been a good year in terms of supporting mission and engaging in mission with our partners. As we come toward the close of 2020, we do face a deficit, and I want to encourage you to consider a year-end gift above and beyond your typical giving to the church. Beth and I have decided to do that, and I invite you to join us as we try to close the gap at the end of the year. We don't know what that gap is, somewhere in the $75,000 to $100,000 level perhaps. So we can begin 2021 in as strong a position as possible to continue the wonderful ministry and, and mission support that we give to the community and beyond in the coming year. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas and a, a blessed end of this year. And 
Let's stay together to still be the church in the coming year. Thank you.